What is social influence? Social psychologists define it as the ways that we are affected by the real and imagined presence of other people. We can respond by yielding to influence or by resisting it. Most of this lecture will focus on the three forms of yielding, conformity, compliance, and obedience. The pressure to be influenced can come from people, groups, or institutions. And the behavior in question can be constructive, destructive, or neutral. Some of these influences are automatic and occur without our awareness. Some behaviors can be contagious, which is called the chameleon effect, when we mimic others' behaviors. Yawning, laughing, and grimacing, for instance, can be contagious. One study found that participants liked a cartoon character more when it mimicked their behavior than when it didn't. Another study found that participants mimicked the Confederates' behavior. Regardless of whether they rubbed their face or shook their foot, the participants copied their behavior. Our emotions, especially negative moods and stress, can also be contagious and rub off on other people. Social psychologists speculate that social imitation may help us interact more effectively with other people. Now that you've been introduced to the topics of this chapter, you'll explore the concept of conformity in the next section. What is conformity, and why do we conform? Conformity is the tendency to change our perceptions, opinions, or behavior in ways that are consistent with the group and its norms. Many people like to think of themselves as independent and try to avoid the conformist label, but all of us are susceptible to these pressures. There are two broad categories of conformity. Private conformity includes actual changes in both overt behavior and beliefs. Long-term changes that remain after the group is gone and the target is alone. It's also known as true acceptance or conversion. Public conformity, on the other hand, includes superficial changes in only overt behavior. Private beliefs remain the same. One of the first researchers to study conformity was Musafer Sharif. Participants sat in a dark room and were asked to estimate how far a dot of light moved on the wall. The dot wasn't actually moving, but Sharif took advantage of an optical illusion called the autokinetic effect. It occurs when a stationary point of light appears to move, sometimes erratically, in various directions, even though it isn't moving at all. When the participants made their estimations alone, they estimated a wide range of numbers. When a single participant sat in a group with Confederates who worked for Sharif, they changed their responses to more closely match those of the other people. Over several sessions or trials, their answers eventually converged upon the answer provided by the rest of the group. Solomon Ash also studied conformity. Participants in groups of seven indicated which of three comparison lines, A, B, or C, matched the length of a standard line. The answer was obviously B, but the other six people, who were Confederates working for Ash, gave the wrong answer. How often do you think the participants conformed and also gave the wrong answer? 37% of the time. In fact, about 50% of participants conformed in at least half of the trials, while 25% conformed on an occasional basis. Since the publication of both of these studies, Social psychologists have replicated their results and expanded our understanding of why we conform. Let's take a look at some of the reasons we conform to the group. One of the reasons we conform is because we have a need to be right. If we think other people are correct in their judgments, we may conform, especially when we aren't sure or don't know. This is called informational influence the power to impact others through information. Consider the show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? If a contestant doesn't know the answer to a question, they can call a friend, and they usually call someone who has the knowledge they need to win. This type of influence usually results in private conformity. Recall that Sharif used an ambiguous task, so others provided a source of information and influenced the participants' true opinions.